you all to do me a favor. Just everybody stand to your feet for a moment. song says learning to lean on Jesus you know this this season that we're in as I've shared with you all many times before we have to be careful of the the noise the noise the noise The noise isn't getting less. It's getting worse. And you know, we, we were reminded, keep playing. We were reminded on Friday night that what we see going on in the Middle East could very well be here. And it's important that we recognize that we cannot depend on politics to save us. We can't, even, we can't depend on our degrees or our jobs to save us. But we're going to have to call on Jesus. Amen. Yes, we're going to have to call on the Lord. But he is a strong tower. We run unto him and we're safe. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to sing that one more time. And it just says, learning to lean, learning to lean on Jesus. Finding more power than I've ever dreamed. Learning to lean on Jesus. Say learning to lean. Come on. Learning to lean. Learning to lean. Learning to lean. I'm learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on, on Jesus. Finding more power. Finding more power than I've ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. One more time, say it. Learning to lean. Learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Find more power than I've ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Come on, let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. We just give God praise on today for this is the day that he has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank God for today. Thank God for uh, any visitors that we have with us on today. Amen. I do see a, a few faces that I've not recognized. Amen. And we thank God for you. If you're a first-time visitor, I'm going to ask if you would just stand. Amen. Thank you so much. Come on. 
Come on, family, let's just give them a warm welcome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And before you take your seat, if you don't mind, just tell me what your name is and where you're from and how you found out about us. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You were in our bodybuilding on Wednesday night. Amen. And uh, matter of fact, Lady Doris uh, mentioned to me that uh, she saw you a few days prior. And uh, you said you were, you were coming. Thank you so much for, for coming home. Amen. So you tell somebody it's time to come home. Amen. We need a whole lot of folk to, to come home. Amen. Amen. People are finding reasons not to go to church. Amen. But you know the day is going to come when they're going to be wishing they could be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Don't, don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. Amen. That just because we are the wealthiest nation in the world, amen, that it's the safest place to be. Mm. Let that one simmer for a while. Amen. Because some folk that got wealth, they want more wealth. Yeah. And their more wealth is going to drive them to despise you who have nothing or little of nothing. Amen. But what they can't take from you, what the, the, the song we used to say, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. But they're going to try. Oh, my, my. Yes, mother. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know what you all are thinking, but what I see right now is not just one family, not just two families, because if she's the grandmother, then that means there's, a, there's another generation, amen, and then the children, so that makes four, amen. We, you know, so everybody put on your back, best, put on your best faces today, <laughs> amen. We have a saying here that the first time you're coming, you're a visitor, but next time you're a family, amen, so we hope that we will see you again. Uh, real soon. Amen. Amen. We're doing something a little different this morning. Uh, I didn't do the video announcements today because I'm asking all Wings members, all Wings members, if you can just hang around after service today. Lady Doris and I have some things that we'd like to uh, share with you. Um, and so uh, we'll, go, we'll go further into our announcements at that time. However, I do know that Sister uh, Evangelist Lily, Mother Lily Hunt, amen, uh, has something that she wants to share. So I'm going to ask her if she would just come at this time. And while she's coming, also I know, um, okay, I know uh, Sister Pat, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Sister Pat's going to bring Mother Lily and then Sister Pat's going to also share, amen, something, all right? Thank you, Lord. While they're coming, I just want to say thank you on behalf of Lady Doris and myself. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who showed up on last, uh, on last week. Um, thank you so much for your support of the Family and Friends Day. Thank you whether you, uh, whether you brought food or whether you invited guests or whether you assisted in serving or whether you gave a donation. Whatever role that you played in on last week, thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you, Pastor John and Lady Keisha as well. Amen, Kingdom Revelation family. Thank you for your contribution as well. We just give God praise. We had a glorious time on last week. Amen. And we just, we're so thankful that the Lord has blessed us once again. And guess what? There's another family and friends coming up on New Year's Eve. Oh, my. So that's going to be a blast. Amen. It's going to be a blast because it's Family and Friends Day. It's going to be a blast. Amen. Because we're already planning our watch night service. It's going to be a blast because it will be a one-year anniversary for the pastor and Lady Doris. <laughs> Yeah. So it's going to be a beautiful day, beautiful day. All right. Praise the Lord. Everybody say Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving Day. 
Praise the Lord. On Thanksgiving Day, the Hill and Wings Mission Outreach is sponsoring a Thanksgiving dinner meal uh, here, at the, here at the Wings. We want to reach out to our seniors in the community and, you know, bless them on that day. Also, anyone you know that might be alone or depressed or whatever might want to come out. We're trying to reach the college students that didn't go home. So uh, we just want to be a blessing to those that may not have family that day or, or, or whatever. But um, what I want to say is we need volunteers, um, and we also need donations for apple pies, pumpkin pie, uh, sweet potato pies, you name it, anything like that. Um, hopefully, uh, our food pantry will be getting our turkeys, but I need about four people to take a, a turkey home and cook it for us for that day. So if you want to volunteer in any kind of way, please let us know. Mother, Mama Jackson will be, Carmen Jackson will be out after church at the table. You can sign up for that. Also, we have a pledge fundraiser going on. You can sign up for that also at the table in the vestibule after church. Thank you. Praise God. I just wanted to remind everyone that the men's department and the ushers and greeters are sponsoring a cookie sale. And um, uh, some of you may have seen the flyer, not the flyers, but had the order forms. Anyone that has order forms, we need all orders in by next Sunday so that we can put the order into the bakery and get the cookies back to deliver on the 19th, which is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. So all orders need to be in by next Sunday. Yes, next Sunday. I had to think of the date. But next Sunday, whatever that date is. And, um, and the cookies will be delivered on the 19th. So we thank you for your participation, your help. If you're not selling, I hope you're buying, because it's all to help benefit the church. Amen. It's not going directly to our auxiliaries. It is to help the church as we press towards our, our centennial. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. And one last thing, since we're talking about turkeys, we have been blessed again this year uh, to partner with, the, um, with another agency, a local agency, a nonprofit, who has blessed us with a lot of not just turkeys, but the entire turkey and trimmings um, as well. Okay, and I mentioned it on last week, and well, there was only like maybe seven of you that actually responded. But if you are, if you'd like to have a turkey, amen, and the trimmings, which will be uh, here for the, on the 18th, your pickup will be on the 18th, that's Saturday, uh, after next, uh, what I need for you to do is to text the word turkey to 856-888-2009. Making it real simple for you, okay? Oh no no no, that's 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 the wrong number. Almost gave you my wife's number. Eight five six eight 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 nine zero zero nine. Excuse me. Eight five six eight 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 nine zero zero nine. Just text the word turkey to that number. And then we'll put you on the list, and uh, you'll be notified the week of. But you're going to have to come here on Saturday the 18th between 11 and 1 o'clock uh, to pick up those turkeys. Okay? All right? And how many turkeys do you, do you need for your thing, Sister Lily? Uh, four. Four? Okay, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay? All right? The Lord blesses us every year with, with an abundance uh, of turkeys, and I know thus far this year we have 150. Okay, and that's complete with the, the, the box is ready. When you take it home, you got a dinner for four. Okay, um, all right. So again, we just thank, we thank God, we thank God for blessing us. Who's, who's doing the offering on today? All right, we, we want to receive our deacon Tom Cummins. Amen. All right. It's time for everybody to be blessed. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Yeah. Well, can we stand for the for the for the reading? Well, will a man rob God? That you have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. For this whole nation, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be not room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed. Amen. Does, everyone, does anyone need an envelope? All right. We lift them ties up. Lord, we just want to thank you for this time that we can be a cheerful giver, Lord, and give back to you, Lord, the 10% in your, your blessed 90, Lord. We thank you for everything that you're doing for us, Lord. Good health, Lord. You do it all, God, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you. I ask you to bless each one here a hundredfold in the name of Jesus, and I just say thank you, Lord. And if you, do, even if you don't have a tie, please walk and touch the bucket the next time that you'll be able to. If you come out to the center there, the center there thing, thank you. Trading my sorrow, I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm training my shame and laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm training my sickness. I'm training my pain. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Can you help me say it? Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, amen. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Hurt, say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, 
Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Take it up a little bit higher. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Why do I feel like I'm in this room by myself? Two, three, come on, say, yes, Lord, yes. Everybody say yes, say yes, Lord, yes, Lord. One more time, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. One more time. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand to our feet. We're going to receive God's servant on this morning. Amen. Amen. He's going to come and give us a word today. Anybody ready for a word? Anybody need a word? Oh, we all need a word from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's receive Pastor John this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. Now you can do better than that. Somebody give him some real glory this morning. I'm sure my, my children often say, why do I stay up late? And why do I get up early on Sunday morning? Why do I keep going and keep pushing and all those things? And that's simply because God's been good to me. If I had the time to tell you, you would not believe me, so I won't even waste time. He's been better than I could ever explain. He's been so good that I don't deserve to live where I live. I don't deserve to work where I work, to drive what I drive. I don't deserve, as a matter of fact, I should be locked up or in jail, but because he's been good. That's why when I say that praise, that regular praise, it's not good enough. Somebody ought to give God some real praise in the house. Thank you, Lord. All the times he's worked it out, all the times he's covered you, all the times that he's blessed you. Somebody ought to give him glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, we thank you. Thank you, God, for another time, another chance, God, another opportunity 
Father, to stand before you and your people. I ask God that you would speak now. I ask God that you would word my mouth. As a matter of fact, God, I step back, God, and I ask you to step forward now in Jesus' name. Send your anointing now, God. God, kill flesh and let your spirit reign in this place in the name of Jesus. And Satan, we serve notice on you that you are defeated in this place. We still have the victory. We still have the victory. We bind you now in the name of Jesus. I come against every distraction. I come against every wayward thought right now. All the fallow ground. I bind it now in Jesus' name. And God, I ask God that you would have your way, Father, in this place. God, flood this place with your presence now, God. Father, let your anointing fall now in the name of Jesus. God will forever give your name the glory. God, all the honor and all the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone says, amen. amen. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Can we bless God for Pastor Gidry on today? Come on, clap your hands for the man of God. Amen. And we got to clap our hands also for Lady Doris. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. And to my wife, my wonderful wife, amen. Come we clap our hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God's been good. Uh, I have to say that I fought and I struggled out. Uh, don't go nowhere yet, man. Um, yeah, don't, don't leave just yet, just yet. I, I might feel something. Amen. You know, I might, I just might. Amen. I struggled all week. Um, dealing with uh, uh, actually Enoch for the last two weeks and on yesterday God switched it he shifted me amen I told uh, co-pastor I said um, I don't know I don't know where I am I don't know if I, if I want to preach this I don't know what I want to preach I told her amen I said I don't even know if I'm ready to preach she looked at me and laughed and said oh you know you got it Amen. I thank God for the woman that he has next to me. Amen. That she's so confident. Amen. Yes, yeah, she's confident in, in my preaching. Amen. I thank God for her. Amen. Would you grab your Bibles? Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. I don't know. Don't know. I'm an I'm E-flat, I believe. That's what I think. <laughs> Amen. Um, the book of Numbers, chapter 23. Oh, God, yes, Lord. Song says, Nobody greater. Nobody greater. I don't know if that's E flat or not. There's nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater. Above all names, names. 
mighty are the works of your hand. So mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your name. Your name is above all names. Name above all. You're worthy of all our praise. Worthy of all our Mighty are the works of your name. So mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your name. Your name is above all names. Name above all. You're worthy of all our praise. Of all our praise. So mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your name. The book of Numbers. Chapter 23. How many know we serve a great God? Yes, Lord. I've got a few verses to read, so um, if you would bear with me. I need to read all, all of them just to, to make my point. Uh, Mighty are the works of your hands. Your name is above all names. Your word of all my praise and mighty are the works of your hand so mighty are the works of your hand your name is above all names you are Works of your name. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your name. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your name. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your name. And Balaam. Bible says he said unto Balak, everybody, Balak, everybody got it? When you got it, say, I got it. Shout, I got it. I like it. I like it. And Balaam said unto Balak, build me here seven altars. And prepare me, he says, here seven oxen upon and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every offer every altar a bullock and a ram yes God and Balaam said unto Balak stand by thy burnt offering and I will go peradventure just maybe the Lord will come to meet me and whatsoever he showeth me I will tell thee and he went to a high place and God met Balaam uh, it blessed me that he uh, was able to be in the presence of God. And he said unto him, I have pre prepared seven altars and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord, somebody say the Lord. The Lord. Put a word, say a word. A word. In Balaam's mouth. And said, return to Balak. Thou Thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all his princes, all the princes of Moab, and he took up his parable and said, Balak, 
the king of Moab, hath brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For, the, for from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of, of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my end, let my last end be like his. Balak said unto Balaam, hast, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them all together. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me to another place. He says, from whence thou may seest them, thou shalt see but the utmost part of them and shall not see them all and curse me them from thence. And he brought him into the hill of Zophim to the top of Pisgah and built seven altars and offered a bullock on and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by thy burnt offerings while I meet the Lord yonder. And once again, the Lord met Balaam. Somebody say, put a word in his mouth. And said, go again unto Balak and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering and the princes of Moab with him, and, and Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? So glad you asked. And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, meaning he doesn't change. Neither the son of man that he should repent hath, he said, and shall God not do it? Or hath God spoken, and shall God not make it good? He says to him, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and God hath blessed, and I, neither you, can reverse it. Thank you, Father, for the reading of your word. Just before you sit down, would you concentrate on uh, verses number 5 and verse number 16, where the Bible says that God put a word in his mouth. Would you look at somebody and tell them, there's a word out over my life. Now, whoever you talk to, they didn't really believe that. Would you find somebody else and tell them, neighbor, come on, say neighbor, there's a word out over my life. Why don't you take your seats? I have wrestled all week trying my best to try uh, to make sure that what I was to preach, what I was to release today was exactly what God wanted me to say. I told you that I had been looking at Enoch, trying, amen, because I read some, some things of him and it really registered in my spirit. And for the last two weeks, I have been uh, dealing with him and all that, uh, uh, the little bit that the Bible tells us about him, but I believe all that he experienced while he was here on earth. Uh, just a little uh, bit of him. You know, the Bible tells us uh, just a few verses of who he was and how he did. And he was only here for 365 years, the scripture says. And the Bible says that he did not die like the rest of them. But he was the only one, according to the scripture, that missed death. Because the Bible says that God took him. 
Uh, it blessed me all over again just to know and understand that you can be in such a place with God. You can walk so closely with him. You can be so in tune with him that God would simply remove you out of everything you're in. God, help me. I really wanted to preach that thing. I did because there's some stuff that I need God to take me out of. There's some situations right now I need him to remove me. God, if you would just take me out. Mm. God help me. But but God shifted me. He he moved me, man of God. And I found it interesting because uh, while I wanted to talk about that, I felt God urge me, shift me, move me to Balaam and Balak. I said to God, well, wait a minute. Now, I preached this a few times. Did did I preach this here already? And, and I couldn't remember. I tried my best to take good notes and I'll write down where I preached and what I'm preaching. And I couldn't find it here. So, so if I did, uh, just listen, hear me, because I believe God has something else to say today. Uh, I saw then that there, there is, or what's happening here, is a conversation when you look at it. A conversation about a people and they have no idea of the conversation. When you read it, you'll find that the Bible tells us that uh, this conversation is simply be between Balak, Balaam, Balaam, and God. I'll say it again. It's between Balak and Balaam, then Balaam and God. And the children of Israel are completely unaware of this conversation. When you read this, you'll see the Bible tells us that uh, here in chapter 23 is simply two of four different conversations they had. The first two begin in chapter 22. And, and they are absolutely unaware of what's going on. Have no idea that somebody is plotting, somebody is scheming, somebody is planning their demise. Uh, God, it, it made me wonder for a second, God, uh, have there been any conversations about me? Because I'm telling you, sometimes stuff is hard. Sometimes things are more difficult than, than what they should be. Is there somebody plotting against me? And I have no idea of the conversation. Uh, uh, you've got to read this because the Bible tells us that Balak, Balak is upset simply because of the children of Israel's success. I read it again and again, and I found out that they had no conversation with Balak at all. They did not enter his territory. They had not, they had not come into his kingdom. None of that happened. They, none of their spies went out. Nothing happened for him to take this course of action against them, except God gave them success. Mm. Ah, that had my wheels turning. I'll be honest, that had my wheels turning because I found out then that people can be absolutely upset with you uh, because of what God is doing in your life. Oh, man, you talk that way, you step on some toes because uh, I see here jealousy. I see here uh, that, that, that he's upset because God has blessed them over and over again. And he's afraid and scared that one day uh, he's going to show up. They're going to show up in his neck of the woods. I read it and the Bible tells us of the success that they had. Uh, from the different territories, the different areas, the different kingdoms that they went to. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us, I wish I had time to get into it. Uh, the Bible tells us there was one king that they sent out a letter to, and they said, listen, we simply want to pass through your highway. Uh, the Bible says that uh, he sent word back, no, you cannot pass through. Uh, they sent word back and said, no, well, listen, um, uh, we're not going to stop. Uh, we're going to make sure that we keep moving. None of our cattle are going to feed off of your land. We're not going to drink any of your water. None of that is going to happen. We simply want to go through your highway because if we don't, we have to go all the way around. And he said no again. Hmm. Uh, I looked at that and I saw that they were only doing what God told them to do. 
I saw that they were only following God's lead. They were going where God told them to go. And uh, it blessed me because uh, I saw then that uh, God gave them the victory over this king when he, he didn't want to fight, but he picked the fight, and God gave them victory over him. So it blessed me and reminded me, oh God, uh -huh, that all you've got to do, Pastor John, is follow the leading of God. God can handle your enemies. He can handle those people that's trying to stop you. He can take care of any Anybody that stands in your way. <laughs> Needless to say that they uh, were victorious over him and that word got back to Balak. Not just him, but there were uh, two or three other kings that uh, God actually sent them to war with and God gave them the victory. And that word got back to Balak. And this is the reason that Balak is trying to get God to curse his people. Balak is afraid that at some point they're going to show up at his kingdom. They're going to show up and knock on his door and God is going to give them the victory. I like this because it showed me that uh, they did not in any way initiate this feud that they were having. And it reminded me that I don't have to be concerned, I don't have to worry, I don't have to, oh God, lose sleep over this, that, and the other because uh, while I don't know it, God is fighting for me. He's fighting for his people. He was reminding Balaam of who his people are and he has blessed his people and that won't change. If you know any about the, anything about the story, you'll find that from the very first time Balaam spoke to God concerning this, God told him they're blessed. From the very first time God talked to ba Balaam talked to God about this, he told them, he would not curse his people. And, and I like that, that no matter how many times you go back and forth to God about me, every single time you're going to get the same thing from God. Oh, God, help me. Uh, see, he's not like us. He don't change because you don't like me. He doesn't act different with me because uh, of what you're saying. God, uh, he doesn't turn his back. He doesn't act in your kind of way. No, what he said from the beginning is what he's going to say until the end. Somebody to give him a hand praise. The Bible tells us that this conversation, it's, it's interesting because Balak just doesn't ask for the victory. But he actually asks God to curse them. He, he doesn't just want to win the fight. No, 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 no. He wants God's people to be cursed. Mm. I'll, I'll deal with this for a second. I had a couple of issues with Balaam because uh, in my point of view, if you are the man of God, if you are in, co in contact with God, if you, if you can go to God and you have uh, this much access to God, uh, don't you get it? Don't you understand that God doesn't change? Uh, it, it, it told me something. You've got to be careful sometimes with, with even church folk. With, with people that say they're spiritual, with people that say they have relationship, with people that say they are in tune to God because they just might be plotting with your enemy. Uh, uh, and mind you, this isn't an enemy that they had declared an enemy. No, Balak said, they're my enemy. And because he had called himself their enemy, and they aren't aware, oh God, uh, Balaam, the one that's in tune with God, is going to God about God's people for what their enemy said. Mm. You got to be careful. You gotta be careful. You gotta tread lightly. You can't just say anything and do anything and act in no kind of way about it with everyone because 
there are some, quote, spiritual people that are plotting. God help me. Uh, in this conversation, he wants God to curse his people. And the Bible tells us that he offers the, on the altars. He gets deep, you know, he uh, pulls out all of the tradition. They, they get the bullocks, they get the rams, uh, because this was the style in that day and time. This is what they did uh, in order to uh, have access to God. They offered up animals, and it, it were, they, these were the best animals. You couldn't just bring God any old kind of thing. You had to be uh, without blemish and all those things, and so they followed protocol, you know, uh, trying to be spiritual. They, they did what they were supposed to do, uh, being deep, and uh, in following protocol, they, they were spending money because uh, your best animals, they were worth the most, you know, and you don't just uh, offer or just throw away this. No, if, if you're going to use your best, that means you mean business. And, and in meaning business, they, uh, he didn't just do it once, but he did it several times. And I saw this, oh God, uh, it told me that your enemy will go through great lengths they will do whatever they have to do. Oh, God. Uh, uh, somebody told me a long time ago that the devil don't fight fair. Oh, God. Uh, and I saw this right here, that the devil was doing everything he could do to try and stop God's people. Mm. Uh, I'm almost finished. I promise. I promise. I'm, I'm almost finished. That he spent his money. He, he paid all of his princes, his, all of his staff, his entourage to be there. The scripture tells us that he stood by his burnt offerings, all the seven altars. Along with him is his retinue, it's, it's everybody that serves in the kingdom with him. Uh, this tells me that he, he has built a stage. He, he has an audience. He's, he has everyone's attention because he's done everything he can to get God's people cursed. Uh, but the Bible tells me that when he is on my side, mm, anybody know the scripture? He's more than the whole world against me. Uh, you can bring all of your staff. You can burn as many burnt offerings as you want to. You can do everything, spend all the money you got. But when God says, I'm blessed, <laughs> oh, God, uh, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Mm. Uh, uh, I, I like this because it reminds me of how constant and consistent God is in my life. Oh, God. Uh, I looked at it again, and I saw that Balak, in, in trying to stop them, oh God, God brought me then uh, to Daniel when the scripture tells us that the angel came to him and said, uh, he heard, God heard your prayer, oh God. Uh, uh, it, it brought me there and told me, God told me this, that, that it doesn't matter that the enemy has come to fight you. It doesn't matter that the devil is out here trying to stop you. Uh, the, God said, the angel said to him that the prince of Persia withstood me, oh God. Uh, but just because he withstood him, uh, just because he held him up, just because uh, he made him delayed, uh, doesn't mean that he stopped God from what God was bringing to him, oh God. Uh, it told me, it told me all over again that God is consistent. God is constant. God does not change. Oh, God. And God is the reason for my success. Uh, I'm going to park it right there. I'm going to get on out of here. Uh, success uh, to some people uh, is one thing. To other people, it's another thing to to whoever else, it's something else. It's, it depends on how you look, how you look at it, how you view it, what you deem as success. Uh, some people say that success is uh, being very wealthy. Success is having all of this, having all of that. But uh, there are some people that aren't successful. They were just lucky, and that's the reason they have all that they have. Uh, case in point, you know, there have been uh, just a few uh, billion dollar lotteries and somebody has won it every time. Not me, uh -huh, but, but somebody did. Uh, they won the billion dollar lotteries and they, they weren't successful. They were lucky. 
uh, because everybody was planning, including me. Don't damn me to hell because I can serve God. I can be rich, and I promise you I'll be right here on Sunday morning running around the church shouting my clothes off because God has done something else. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, but they were lucky because, lucky because, oh, God, uh, everybody was trying to win this thing. Uh, at my job, we were putting up, uh, uh, 15 of us or 10 of us putting up $10 each, uh, trying to put it all in the pot, figuring out how much we would win, how much we would get if we won. Uh, other jobs doing the same thing. Everybody across the country in every single state that, uh, that played the lottery, everybody was trying to win this thing. And so for the winners in California, which I'm scratching my head, how did they keep winning? But, but for the winners, uh, they were simply lucky because they got the numbers everybody else wanted. Success sometimes uh, isn't luck, uh, 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 just luck. Sometimes it's because of who you are connected to. It's where you find yourself. Uh -huh. When you think about all of the Walton kids, that's Walmart, all of their kids, they weren't successful. No, they were just passed this thing down to them. That's the reason for their, quote, success. For others of us, uh, other people I know, they, they claim success is, oh God, when you work and you work and you overcome trials, uh, you overcome this, that, any other, and you stick to it, you stay with it, and after a while from working and working and doing everything you can do, you become successful. Well, the children of Israel were successful because they had God on their side. They were successful because before they got here, God made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that promise carried itself down to the children of Israel. They, they were successful because God is a man of his word, just like Balaam said to Balak. He's not a man that he should lie, and whatever he said, he's going to do. Balak is having a tizzy because of their success. I found out that people, doesn't matter where you are in life, doesn't matter what's going on, some people see you as successful. I found out that your successfulness can be the reason that right in the church, right in your job, right wherever you are, when you're in your family, wherever you find yourself, your uh, being successful, oh God, can cause others to buck up and fight against you, oh God. Uh, let me work right there. I feel God tugging me, oh God. Uh, because God has blessed you, because uh, God has worked some things out, because God has favored you, you can best believe that somebody's coming up against you because they don't like the favor, they don't like the blessing, they don't like what God's doing in your life, oh God. Oh, I feel like preaching now. The Bible here tells me that. Hold me there. I ain't ready yet. I ain't ready yet. Uh, the Bible here tells me, God, help me, uh -huh, that they were simply minding their own business. They were doing uh, what they were supposed to do, and that's the reason uh, that they found themselves successful, oh God. Uh, uh, somebody needs to understand this. The Bible tells us uh, that obedience is better than sacrifice, oh God. Uh, so your obedience, yes, uh, can bring you into blessing, oh God. Uh, and God can't help but to bless uh, somebody that's being obedient. Can I get a little bit of help right here? Uh, I see, I see that the Bible tells us that they're uh, being successful was because uh, every fight that they found themselves in, uh, the Bible tells us that God was right there backing them, oh God. Uh, and baby, you can't lose. You cannot be defeated whenever God is working on your behalf, oh God. Let them say what they will. Let them do whatever they want to. Let them work it however they want to work it. But when God is on my side, yeah, 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 I'm coming through this thing, oh God. The Bible tells me here, I'm finished now. The scripture tells me, God help me, that Balak went to Balaam. The scripture says every single time Balaam came back, God told him. Uh, the very same thing oh God uh, I had to stop there and say to God I thank you Lord uh, because I know there are some folk out here some people that don't like me some people that have been trying to stop me somebody has been 
getting in my way, but every single time they come, God help me, you say the same exact thing uh, every single time, oh God. Uh, baby, he don't change. Uh -huh. He's not a fair weathered friend. God does, he's not up and down, no. He's consistent and constant all the time, oh God. Uh, let me get out of here, oh yes. Uh, the scripture says then that God put a word in his mouth. Somebody say a word, say a word, say a word. Uh, uh huh. Don't you know that the Bible says God says it about Himself uh, that my word shall not, it cannot, this is not possible. There's no way it can happen. Return unto me, void, oh God. Uh, he said that the thing I sent it out to, what I called it, what I said it would be, it has to perform. Uh, God help me, yes. Uh, he said it cannot come back void. Uh, in other words, it has to perform the thing, uh, it has to do what I told it to do. Uh, it can't work no other way. Uh, so whenever I release it, whenever I speak it, whenever I say it, it has to come to pass. Give God a hand praise. Thank you, sir. I see then that the Bible here tells me uh, that every single time Balaam came back, uh, God was saying the same exact thing. Uh, the Bible says here that God put a word in his mouth. Yes. Uh, and every time that word came back, uh, it was nothing but a blessing. Uh, every time that word came to Balaam, uh, God's people are blessed. Uh, I found out then, yes, uh, uh, this here is the reason, yes, uh, the reason that that I keep on going, God help me. Uh, the reason that I will not stop, yes. Uh, this is the reason, my God, uh, that I found out some people laughed at me. Uh, but the reason in my life, God help me, uh, when they walked off and left, uh, God kept talking to me. Uh, he reminded me of the word. Uh, God kept speaking, yes. Uh, uh, telling me the same thing. Uh, uh, telling me I'm blessed. Uh, hit me here. Uh, uh, telling me John don't quit. Uh, he was telling me this. Uh, that what I spoke concerning you uh, John it has not changed. Uh, what I said concerning your life. Uh, it's going to come to pass. Uh, uh, God kept talking to me uh, when I felt that I was down. Uh, but God was the one uh, that reminded me of the word. Uh, God kept saying it. Uh, God kept speaking it. Uh, God kept telling Telling me this, John Moore, yeah, there's a word out over your life. There's something I said. It has to come to pass. Don't you quit. Don't you stop. Don't you dare give up. Don't you throw in the towel. There's a word out and it's still speaking. There's something I said from the foundations of the world and it won't stop ringing. It won't stop echoing. It won't stop saying it until I come. There's a word out. Give God a hand. Pray. So for every Balak in my life, yes, Lord, <laughs> for everybody that's plotting, everybody that's scheming, I stopped by here today. I want to remind you, yes, that there is a word out over my life. Somebody needs to grab a hold of that thing. That's the reason you're still here now. That's the reason you can't die. That's the reason you've got to live. Because the word is out. Come get my stuff, Christian. The word is out. Play softly. The word is out. God has blessed. And he said he can't reverse it. If it were to be reversed, that means God would have lied. And that's why he said God's not a man that he should lie. That's, that's why he made it plain to him that from the very beginning of this, I told you God said they're blessed. And because he has blessed, I'm nobody. I'm just a messenger. 
I might have access to them, but I can't change them. Because he said it. They're blessed. And it can't be reversed. Mm. There's so many things that, that happened with me when, when I read this. So many thoughts. So many, so many what ifs and, and questions that, that I had. Because, because it tells me something, that, that if God doesn't change, that means uh, my situation might not be good right now. But after a while, he's got to bring me through that thing. It, it might be hard. It might be difficult. I might be crying. I might be mad. But after a while, he's got to be God and do what he said. And deliver me from it. He's got to bring me through it. Because he said he would. And if he doesn't, that means he's not worth serving. He's not who he is. He's not who he said he is. And when I look back over my life, oh, Jesus. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm understanding now why, why the old people said some of the stuff they said because uh, they went through hell. They went through high water, but somehow God brought them through it. I found out that he'll do it Every single time. Because his word shall not, cannot, it's not possible to return to him void. And whatever he said, shall he not do it? Shall God not make it good. And that's the God we serve. For every single one of us in this room, there's a word out over your life. And I need you to be encouraged today that that word is still speaking, that word is still working. I don't care what it is, I don't care how long it's been, I don't care how difficult, I don't care what it is, that word is still speaking. It's still resonating. It's still resounding. It's bouncing off the walls. The devil is still hearing it. That's why he's trying to stop you. Because the word is still speaking. Glory God is still speaking. It's still speaking. And it won't stop. That's why when the accident that was supposed to kill me did not. Because God's word was out over my life. That's why when I was born, they, that my mom told me I was born with pneumonia. That's why the day that I was born, the enemy couldn't kill me then. Because God has put a word concerning my life. He spoke it and it's coming to pass each and every Somebody's been tempted to quit and give up. I feel you. I've been there. Thought those things myself. Let my situation get to me to the point that I just felt that I couldn't make it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't perform this. Couldn't be this. Couldn't whatever. That's when God came in and reminded me what he said. I told him all about the people that said they love me, the ones that this, the ones that that, all that, that stuff. And God said he never changed. He said he still loves me. He, he's still working for me. He's still working on my behalf. And because he's still working and working his word, I dare not quit. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. Don't you stop. Yes, there's an enemy out there. Oh, God. Uh, 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 who is it? Second Peter. The scripture says that, that we're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Every single day. But there's no reason to quit. Because no matter how much they count, 
there's somebody else that already counted you in. So they can count you out. But his word trumps their word and he's counting you in. If you felt like quitting, I need you to stand up. If you thought it was too difficult, too hard. If you felt like you couldn't make it. I just want to pray for you. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage your heart today. See, because uh, there's an enemy that's going to consistently fight against you. But you need to be reminded of what God has said concerning you. And, and what he said about your enemy is that you already have the victory over him. Basically, he's just bluffing now. He's making noise. He's using scare tactics. He's trying to distract you. Trying to get you to stop. Trying to get you to quit. But I want to encourage you today. Baby, God's got something for you. The Bible tells me that all of his promises are yea and amen. Scripture tells us that he will do what he said he would do. And anything that you need him to do, the Bible tells us that he does exceedingly abundantly above that. It says above all that you can ask or think. So whatever you need, he already knows you're in need of it. And God has already worked that thing above and beyond. Mm. <laughs> yes, Lord. It's about letting everyone know there is a God. The Bible says that the fool has said in his